Welcome back to the AOT Chronicles of Attack on Titan podcast. I'm your host, Ronnie. And I'm Chad. And that was us turning off the TV, if you by chance heard that through the microphone, because that's what we do around here. Yep. We watch the episode, we watch it again, take notes, and then what do we do? We get right to the pod table and knock this thing out. Yep, and I tried to pull a little sneak attack with that turning off of the TV. Uh, hey, Chad, how many podcasts do you listen to of the television variety where a new episode releases and then five to six hours later you got an episode waiting for you on the podcast feed? Not many. Anyone hustling and bustling like Ronnie and Chad? No. I've checked out all the other uh, podcast sites. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're doing, hustling and bustling. And tonight, that means Season 4, Episode 18, Episode 77, Sneak Attack. Oh, is it really called Sneak Attack? It's wow, I just said that about the TV just coincidentally. That the TV was sneaking and attacking? No, I was sneaking attacking, the turning off the TV. Fantastic. What did you think this episode? I thought it was solid. Um, another cliffhanger. That's, you know. Par for the course. Yeah. Very excited for next week. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a really solid episode. I like I like the little showings of finally getting Falco back. I'm yeah. glad to see my boy. Yeah, looking at it as a whole, it was sort of like a uh, a bridge of an episode, like we had last episode, yeah. and this is going to bridge to perhaps things in the future, but at the same time, we had a lot going on. We got brought more characters back into the fold, mm-hmm. set some more stuff up, and I am just chomping at the bit to get into it. It's, I'm going to be distracted because we live in Georgia, as we've stated before, and we've actually got some snowy conditions right now, and so it's beautiful it's outside. It's you, know? Beautiful. you know what? Let's bring the pot outside. You want a pot outside? We're potting tonight? outside tonight. Right, let's pick up the table and let's just... No, that's silly. And it's not sticking. It's very wet outside. It's not your typical snow because it just rained for the longest, yeah. and now it's starting to snow. And I can go unchain my mother. She'll take the photo. Mm-hmm. And we live in Georgia, so therefore, what does that mean? The whole world is ending down here. If you don't hear from any of us soon, it's because we don't know what to do with ourselves. I've got a car that is not built for this terrain. I'm going to be slipping and sliding on my way home. And just because it's a a low vehicle, you know, it's built for speed more so than it's Honda Civic. And it's just going to be tough to get where I'm going if this stuff starts sticking to the roads. Not enough Where am I at? The studio, because we're doing this episode. Let's get into it. So it was kind of funny. Before we started, you made a joke, and you've never made this joke before, but you were like, what if it's just three-fourths of the episode is just being repeat stuff from last episode? Yeah. I I talked to you about how excited I was for this episode, and I was like, this is going to be a Dragon Ball episode where they, for three-fourths of the episode, it's just Goku screaming and powering up. I was like... And while that wasn't necessarily the case, it was more true than we've ever seen in Attack on Titan before. We got some reused material that they just kind of showed us more of afterwards. Yeah. But in it the beginning, fl- it, it was funny. It flowed straight into new yeah. stuff. I was like, wait, is this really going to happen? But it it wasn't nearly as bad as what it almost was. Because we did. We got Mikasa saying she wants to help Eren, but worried about it not being her own will. And like I said, this time it plays a little bit further... Armin yells that Aaron can protect the island with the rumbling, causing an awkward silence, which is broken by only one of uh, Chaz's top five characters, wouldn't you say? A hundo percento. Okay. And? Jean. No, that's not who breaks the awkward silence. What a failure. Who? Your guy. Come on. Who? Think about it. Oh, God. oh my boy Connie. Sorry. No! Stop! <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. Um... Who breaks the awkward? It was a great moment. We watched Keith the episode Sadies? twice. Am I gonna have to? If I'm, am I gonna have to edit this out to keep the respect of the oh pod? Oh my god! No, Fred. Oh my god! It was Mr. Browse. He said, "Can we please leave?" <laughs> what a dis! You disappointed me greatly. I thought you had the Wikipedia page on oh Fred. Oh my god! Yeah, he says, "Can we? Uh, can we leave now?" And. I love, you. I love how they're having the most serious moment, and you, it just pans over to him, and he's just like, can we leave now? Well, he's just like, this seems to be taking a lot of time, and we are not involved in this at all, so can we? Yeah. Nicolo's like, just let's give him one more minute here. And then Jean does. He yeah. talks about how he was right about Aaron all along, that he was always a shithead that was going to lead everyone to hell, but he always envied that asshole for being so cool. 
Yeah. And which, I, which he was never really cool, but I guess in their situation he kind of was. Yeah, because when he said that, I was like, Aaron was never cool. But if you do put yourself in John's shoes, which, first of all, you Aaron in a way They're had— way too big for you, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, I mean, no way I'm fitting in those size 13s or whatever he wears. Aaron always had Mikasa in his back pocket, and Jean rides for Mikasa, so that, I'm sure, broke his heart and made him look up to him a little bit. Also, when Aaron's turned into a Titan, it's hard to not be like, damn. Yeah. And he's always, even before he was a Titan, he was always the one that's like, I don't give a damn, I'm going to go fight. He, he always led it, even though he got his ass kicked, you know, 95% of the time. So then Connie, uh, he speaks up, says, he can't die yet, I still need to slug him in the face. Mm-hmm. Which got me thinking, where does a slug, a slugging in the face, rank in the pantheon of hits to the face? A slug is like... I got, how about a strike to the face? I think slug's worse. Alright, how about a pounding? Well... I think of a pounding in different terms. That's something I would like to give to Mika so after we well, see her I just, running up the steps. What if I just pound you in the face? Uh, slug. slug. Does it weigh more than a pound or not? I think a slug is teetering on the poundness. All right, and then here's the last one I got. How about a wallop? What if I wallop you in the face? A wallop? I think it's heavier than a slug. Yeah. Thank God he's not giving Aaron a wallop because that would kill him. But right now it's just... Yeah. Which, a slugging just... I think you can define it by you're letting someone know you mean business. Yeah, I always think of, like, for some reason, I always think about the the 1940s when I hear Mm -hmm. the term slugging. Yeah, because you would slug a wise guy. Yes. And they had a bunch of wise guys in the 1950s. They had a bunch of wise guys. All right, we got to the bottom of that. We then start running up the world's longest staircase ever. And it's got some curve to it. You could get a little dizzy if you start going up these too quick. You know, this actually made me think about this building. They're in the basement of this building. Yeah. If you look at the Call it a dungeon. They're in the dungeon. This, what do you call this? A castle, pretty much? Like a, I don't know. Stronghold, castle, headquarters. This thing is fucking gigantic. Yeah. I want to know how many, uh, in terms of feet, we're not on the metric system. I know Aaron is apparently 16 meters, which is... In my head, that could be a thousand feet. That could be two hundred feet. I have zero idea. Well, the show doesn't know either. Shout <laughs> out to season three, when sixteen meter Aaron uh, had a duel with the sixty meter, meter Titan, and that so which is it means he's one fourth basically. Yeah. Of that, and he only came up to the top of his big toe, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I remember him fighting a toe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Aaron, because Aaron transformed on the castle. And he, it still made him look tiny. Well, then the interesting thing is, I don't really know how long ago this uh, stronghold, Holt stronghold was built, but as we see them running up these stairs, there's no doors to other entry points. It, nope. it seems like they were very concerned about their prison situation, so they were like, okay, build the main floor, dig down. 500 floors yeah. and that is where the dungeon will be and they were like do we want to put in like a a bathroom a half bath and they're like no on the way up strictly yeah. <laughs> just the dungeons yeah if you got a shit and you're walking up those steps you oh. better just let it out because there is nothing if you're halfway up those things it's like what do you even do um okay so then i was saying mikasa really fills out those uh pants though okay gross don't She's trying to get up these stairs. Don't do that. Well, I'm com- complimenting her legs. She's got nice, long legs. I was worried about them, especially because they need to pace themselves. They've been locked up here for a little while. Cardio, it goes away very quickly. Are they in yeah. shape to sprint up these stairs? And as we see, because it's going to be a while before they get to the top of these in episode time, I don't think they pace themselves. No. But we'll get to that later. Mikasa is still caught on Aaron saying that he hates her, and Armin starts to think, and he does his beep, 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 which we haven't done in a long time. You haven't. But that's what he's doing, because he recalls monotone Aaron from the end of season four, or season three, forgive me, talking about if we kill all our enemies, will we finally be free? And then he says, could it be? 
Armin says that, thinking back to yeah. that. Yeah, Armin Which, starts spinning his own theory about how Aaron was acting this whole time to try and knock them off the scent. So you think that's what he, when he said, could it be, that's what he's thinking about right there? Oh, yeah, I think Armin... Which is interesting, because this has been the question all along, even in our preview podcast, what side is Aaron on? They've pretty much stapled Armin's thoughts down. I think Armin has fully bought into, oh, Aaron is still, he's still my good buddy, he's on our side, he just is doing what he thinks he's got to. Armin's, which is is dangerous. That is a ride or die best friend. He just got his ass kicked. I would never do that for you. Oh well, we're God. not in this situation. You just think about this situation. If I had the powers of a god, mm-hmm. you would so do that for me. No, I don't. If you slugged me in the face like we saw yeah, Aaron do to Armin, did. there would be no going back from that. <laughs> well, you're right because you'd be fucking dead. I'd slug you <laughs> right in the noggin. You're no, no, gone. no. You didn't wallop me. Now <laughs> you slugged me. <laughs> but I thought this is interesting though that uh, everyone was kind of like, "Yeah, we need to take Aaron's side." Mikasa, out of all of them, is the one kind of questioning everything. She still well, seems b- like... Poor Mikasa. She's still just in her head so much, I think. But isn't that awesome, though? Like This whole entire s- series, we've seen that she's always been the one that no matter what, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm completely on his side. Now it looks like they're, they're kind of bought in, and she's the only one that's really yeah. not. No, that's true. Armin says he needed to come up with a lie. Mikasa ponders this, but has to focus on pacing herself because, like I said earlier, they're not halfway up these stairs. Now, yet. why does he need to come up with a lie, though? Can you want to theorize well, he, on that? I think he mentions it downstairs earlier, where he's like he needed Zeke and Yelena to trust him, and I think well, it's as simple as that. So that's why he had to tell. Why did he have to be mean to Mikasa like that, though? Um, because how else? It was his only hope of her not doing what she's done through every single episode of the show and trying to be right by his side the whole time. So you think, too, he... Because I, I was thinking about this as well. If they were not locked in that basement, they would have... There's like a 99% chance they would have been gunned down by airships. Yeah, I mean, that's very yeah. possible. Like, you know, Aaron can use Flock because he doesn't give a fuck about him. No, dude. Come on, <laughs> don't. He cares Mika a said lot he cares about, about so he's got a no. he's got a hurt of feelings. The trying successor to... of the founding founding titan in the future, and you're gonna say he doesn't care about him? Come on! I still think he gives a fuck about <laughs> flocks. So outside, the zeppelins are still raining hellfire down below. We get a bit of a repeat up here as well as McGath gives Willie Kendor Saviors a shout out once yeah. more. Love that. I got a I got a coffee cup in my hand right now. Yeah. Blowing up in the air. Cheers, Cheers to Willie. Remember him as he was. Reiner stabs Aaron once more like last episode, igniting Aaron's Titan yell in one last stand as he uses the Warhammer ground spikes. We get a close-up of him. Basically, his brains are falling out. Dude, he's exhausted. There's no way after that last spike... What do you even call those? Spike? Uh... Yeah, we need like a name for them because the Warhammer ground spikes is a bit of a mouthful, as you saw when I or heard when I tripped. I up can't on even it. think of a name right now. Well, a spike Taj. I'm gonna call it a spike Taj. Okay. He sends a spike Taj out. It's a montage of spikes. Is yep. that what you're leading me to believe? Yep. All right. Sends a spike Taj out, and I think not only is he super fucked up, but he's used so many of those spikes now. This guy has got to be running on fumes. I agree. He can't have any energy left. I think we're going to see that he's running on a few here very shortly. What, you think his eyeball f- out of his sock out of the socket just hanging there and his brain's falling out has something I to do mean, with it? I mean, he got slugged pretty good here. Yeah, what happens? Do you take a whooping? When you take a whooping in the face, is that when your eye starts falling out of your head? No, a whooping is more just like, oh, I'm going to give him a whooping. Okay. All right. We'll figure it out. Porco comes in with the jaw titan. He needs to take a few suggestions out of the title of this episode. He should have went with more of a sneak attack. That's not I've never understood the... Before you even make contact, because Aaron hears him coming from a mile away, hardens up a fist, and just knocks him into next Tuesday. No, that's where you're wrong. He knocks him into next Tuesday. (laughs) The eye socket... That was out of the socket had turned oh, okay. and saw him. I like behind. that theory too. I like that theory as well. He's got eyes in the back of his head, literally now. <laughs> literally, 
Reiner, he gets up. Oh, yeah, but by the way, when he socks, we're going to give him... He gives him a good old... Not oh, a socking. a socking. A good old socking. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to so say this is So we got slugging. We got a socking. This is a good old... No? A good old socking. A good old socking. When he gives him this good old socking, Porco goes flying across the map. Yeah, I, I had in my notes to next Tuesday. Would you agree? I agree. What and day I, of the week is he in? Tuesday. Thank you. And I, I also put... He went flying across the map like a throwing knife. Okay. Do you know how you could just... Remember those games? I don't remember what Call of Duties it was, but where you could throw a throwing knife... Oh, no, no, I know what you're doing. All the way across the map. You're thinking montage, spike touch, so then you got to Call of Duty montages where people were knife throwing touch. knives across the... Yep. I'm with you. I feel like we're really connecting tonight. So during all that, Connect Reiner touch. starts, he gets up, tackles Aaron again, holds his head down as he says... Why did I ever think we were the same? And what did you think of that line? In what way did he think they were the same exactly? I think when Aaron told him in the in declaration of war, when he says, we're the same. We, when he says, we were, we're, we're the, the same. same. It really connects to them. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think he thinks that Aaron now is just too far gone, and he's not trying to be... Reiner's still trying to be like that hero for his hometown and i think he thinks that this guy is well, not a yeah I, he's more of a uh does reiner realize that aaron is going for something more that he's not just trying to be a hero for his hometown I think anymore so. i think he's like you've at this point you've lost yourself he's like in the beginning i not even meaning to i killed all of those innocent people and now it seems like you're doing it completely on purpose okay maybe i don't know so Reiner starts to bite his nape, but Aaron manages to get four phalanges right into the oh, roof man. of his mouth as he pushes up, splitting his jaw. Um, God. Owie. Owie. I don't normally like saying your line, but I've got to say it on that one. Well, yeah, because that's a whole big load of owie. And just think, that if it was only three phalanges, probably doesn't hurt nearly yeah. as bad. But when you get at least four up in there, oh. right. When you get that full four, ugh, you're going to do some ripping. Yeah. During all that, uh, Reiner gets hit hard with something as we turn and see Zeke Monkey. the Wonder Boy's Beast Titan atop the wall. And what a dope-ass shot. I paused oh, on it yeah. when we were taking notes. It's all the way down there with Aaron, and all you can see is just the outline of yeah. the beast just raining over. We've got the spike still through Aaron's shoulder, and it, you just see right above him. Just beautiful. The beautiful monkey. He says, I'm a little late, but I made it to the place that we agreed upon. Good job hanging in there, Aaron. Leave the rest to your big brother. Rumbling. Rumbling. Which just leads into the intro perfectly. Oh, my God, dude. And... Magath too. I don't know if you you might have said this, um, but Magath says it's the Wonder Boy. Oh yeah, kind of put you were going monkey. I just called him Zeke <laughs> the Wonder Boy. And after the OP, did you have anything new takes on the OP? I mean, you. Did, I mean, this time, last time you just had this shocked look on your face. You took your flaccid cock out, and I will say yeah. it was not flaccid for long. This go round, I just kind of turned away. Grew a solid half an inch, Enjoyed. and I was torqued. Okay, but you know, it's I was just head banging. I love emo Aaron. Um, protect emo Aaron at all costs. Yeah, that's all I got for you. It wasn't a phase, mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carla, Carla is literally just disgusted up in heaven right now, looking down at Aaron. So after the OP, we get the perfect game-o version 2. Oh, yeah. We get the Beast Titan music, the dun 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 He's chucking some rocks, knocking out a few Zeppelins. We then cut to a shot that essentially has us living inside the Cart Titan's asshole. <laughs> yeah, you said, you said, this is an awesome, you were like, oh, what a shot. And then I go, yeah, those explosions are awesome. And you go, what explosions? Yeah, as I didn't the, know what you were talking about. As the airships are exploding, all you are looking at is Peak's giant ass. And I, I put right here, too, what kind of BDM contraption? Uh, she's yeah. got that equipment on her. A lot of leather straps. Yeah. if She's lucky there's not a uh, erotic Titan around because that thing would be in for a ride. 
What do you think the horniest Titan is? It's got to be Aaron, right? The Attack Titan. Because the Attack Titan. He, he's just he's yeah. shredded up. He's always angry. He's always running at people. Yeah, the Attack Titan is definitely the uh, the horniest for sure. So McGath says he will blow his nape. And uh, but Zeke throws at them right before they get the chance, and this is where we both agreed that he's got to be throwing just chunks of the wall. Yeah, because um, he's standing on the wall. I guess it's he's right above like the the original where Aaron sealed the gate. Isn't that like his hardened Titan was down there? Did you see that? Perhaps. But the the wall, like the way the wall is structured right there, because I guess that's where the gate was. It has like pillar sticking up it's not flat completely flat right so it looks like he's just well it doesn't show it but i'm assuming he's just tearing off there that's kind of a bummer because if that is what's going on that seems like it'd be a really cool touch for them to show but they never did it on screen so you know make it even cooler if he was like hardening his hands a little bit because we know he can harden yeah he's just hard just taking off the rocks and throwing. why did why wouldn't they show i don't know why they didn't do that god dude it's They've shown us plenty of times of him just taking boulders yeah. and grinding them up to like perfect little throwing rocks. So I'm sending a message to Issy on Start typing it up. So the cart's hanging from the side of the wall, and uh-oh, it's a party now because here comes the flock squawk. The flock cock squawk. And Aaron gets up, starts very, very slowly making How do you his think... way to his brother. Go ahead. Well, let's not talk about it. we got more important stuff to talk about right now. How do you think that uh, Zeke got there? Do you think he was butt ass naked on the back of Flock's horse? Um, and think about it, all of, like the vibrations of the horse galloping. There's no way that right. obviously Zeke. We don't think Zeke is into dudes. He could be because he doesn't want children. So he, I mean, he really could be. But okay, you think he's riding uh-huh. on the back of Flock's horse, straddling Flock. You think all the vibrations and stuff. Even if you don't want to get you know a little right. aroused, you think that it would just do it a little like. I know when I've been in cars, there's been bumpy rides. I'm okay. like, whoa, this thing's getting a little bigger. Okay. Um, and I would imagine on a horse, that thing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's just making you stick up a little bit. So, okay. So what I'm trying to say is, was Zeke hard on the back of Flock's horse on the way here? How so did you're, he get You're here? saying anytime you're on a horse, anytime you're in a bumpy car ride, the bumpiness, you and know, vibrations the inertia, are- the inertia of... You know, things hitting your butt and stuff reminds you of taking poundings and so you get is that what not hitting my butt i mean i am sitting down so i guess it is hitting my butt but i'm just but you think if you're are butt, you sitting on the washing machine you've been sitting on washing I'm, machines i yeah you, you're the i would try to go on you said flock clock squawk and then you went to the subject so i'm just trying to make sure that your vision yep displayed how you would like for it to be on this landscape that is this podcast i'm just saying if i was butt naked Mm -hmm. on a vibrating horse right i would probably stick up a little but only if you're butt naked if you've got yeah if you've got a millimeter of cloth yeah then you've got a little cloth you can keep you can keep yourself under control but i just want if anything, we better get a flashback of Zeke riding here on a horse butt naked. All right. Moving on. That's weird. Aaron gets up and starts very slowly making his way to his brother. And, and you know what I call this walk right okay, here? Okay, here we go. <laughs> what do you call this walk? I call this the Chad walk on a Saturday night in Athens when I've had 10 Red Bull vodkas uh-huh. and I'm slowly walking. Well, I'm kind of running because I'm getting right. chased down by women that I gro- that I groped in the bars, but I'm Interest- slowly walking Interesting. to the Uber. Be careful. To the Uber, getting ready to go home. That's what I call this. You are painting such a beautiful picture of yourself this podcast. I cannot... <laughs> I am just eager with anticipation with every new note that I read to see what you've got over there on your laptop. Okay, so that was the Chaz walk. Meanwhile, we cut over to Gabby and Colt. Get, be careful. I'm talking about Gabby here. Okay, let's not. I'm just saying, you're on a roll. Be careful. He says we have to leave the Titans for the Titans. They have other things to worry about, such as finding Falco. Who we then yeah. cut to. Oh, did you have something? 
<laughs> well, so Gabby said, gotta stop him. Like, what is she gonna do here? I know. Gotta stop him. It but, reminded me of gotta marry her. Yeah, it did. And, but hey, be careful. Wait, what did, what did you just say about Gabby? Gotta marry her. Not Gabby. Be, you're telling me to be careful. And you, and you, you're that, what a weak effort. I'm obviously shouting back to Reiner, oh, who okay. Historia ripped her dress to dress his wounds, and he said, gotta, gotta marry her. Yeah. Okay. Just make sure you Told specify. you not to make it weird, and you did. We cut to Falco. He's locked in a room with the infected, uh, one of which is Niall. They're having a nice old chat. Falco is telling him that rescuing an Eldian is the last thing Marley's military would do. But you forgot about your big brother Colt, buddy. He's mm-hmm. coming for you. Niall thinks about his family and how he doubts he will ever get to see them again because all it will take is one scream from Zeke. That's a good throwback there. We saw in season three with Erwin um, when he was, you know, he took a good old whopping. Yeah, he took a wallop. A walloping, yeah. And he was chained up in that in that prison. Niall comes to talk to him, and he talks about his family. Mm-hmm. And do you? This is a really, really good callback. I've got a uh, five brain right here. Okay. Do you remember Niall's wife's name? Because I do. Cynthia. Wow, that was pretty close. close. It was Marie. That was close, dude. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was going to make fun of you, but that was a great effort. That was a great effort. I knew it was the name of one of my cousin's aunts, and I they yeah. have an aunt, Cynthia, and an Aunt Marie, so I just got the wrong one. I'm mixed up. Niall, uh, or sorry, we then cut over to see our gang has finally reached the top of the stairs. Just to be f- They stop- need one of those stairmasters. They do. They're not stairmaster. What is the thing that you sit on? Before I know, old but have you seen those things move? They would have taken even longer to get to the top. We reach the top of the stairs just to be stopped by a cock on the flock squawk. Yeah, oh, this this is the same dweeb. This is the same loser that beat up our commandant. Oh, and you know what? I think it's Connie's long lost cousin, Donnie. Donnie. Because he's got the same exact haircut, it's just a little darker. I think they might be related. Yeah, this is uh, Buff Burt's younger brother as well. <laughs> Jean threatens uh, to rough him up a little bit. Tells this guy, are you seriously going to stop us for trying to help Aaron, your god? Yeah, that was a good line there. And this guy, you know, he's a new one. He's a new recruit. We saw him training. I mean, what a fucking loser. He's a joke. Jean convinces him pretty quickly because we go over and we're open up the cells and fuck yeah we're open them up yeah. because who else is, could be in these cells but the rough and tough rambling gambling Woo! man this cruel world needs this cruel world deserves ladies and gentlemen yeah. Keith Sadie sleepy Keith, vampire Keith, 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 Keith. and it's right there. I'll hand it off to you, Chadley. What does our Lord and Savior have to say? Keith has to start off with an epic line, of course, because he always does. Connie's letting him out. Best thing Connie's yep. ever done. He tells Connie that, oh, huh, Connie? Don't worry, I just wrestled with a bear. <laughs> and I bet he hey. said brawled with a bear. Hey, but. if you see Keith Sadies and a bear in a fight, Help the bear. Help the bear. And I, you know what I put right here? I fucking believe him. I believe him. I believe him too. I put on the way to that prison, he was already beat to shit by his stupid little scout recruits. Mm-hmm. That they ran into a bear, of course, because you know they had to go through some wilderness to get right. to this place. And what did this guy do? Everyone freaked out. They pulled out guns. He said, no. I'm taking this from he said. He said, respect nature. Guns respect. are not the way. Respect nature, and he beat the piss out of this bear. I would hate to see what this bear looks like. Not until after he walked up to it, squared his shoulders, looked at it in the eye, and bowed. Because he respects his opponents. And instantly went for the neck. The bear or Keith? No, Keith. Keith went for the neck, took it out in one hitting, or slugging. He took it out in one slugging. and then But then he tells Connie, he says, forget about me and go. Trust me, the bear had it a lot worse. He didn't say that, but I added that line in because I felt it was much needed. 
and he tells that to, he wants everyone to clear out because he knows that they're coming for him. He wants to be by himself to not put anyone else in danger. Yeah. So he's just gonna roll over and meditate for a little bit longer. He's like, I've finally gotten some God. sleep. I haven't had any since season one. I would run through a brick wall for that man. They get to Pixis, who says he hasn't lost his marbles yet. Another one of my mentors slash heroes. Yep. But he does have a drinking problem, and he proceeds to show his armband. A little drinking problem, and that's the first step. I love to hear it. If only we could get Chaz to admit his vaping problem, he would be in a place to make no. healthy lifestyle changes such as Dot right here. I will not admit I have a vaping problem until I'm wearing an armband because I'm a vapist. Okay. okay. The funniest part about this was is that it goes back to Armin and them, and they're shocked to hear that Pixis is one of the people that drank the wine. They're like, what? <laughs> no way. If anything, you should just tell the man, we know you drank it as soon as you walk up. Like, how would you not think that this guy has not drinking at least two gallons of that wine? Pixis then rallies up the soldiers. We get a nice callback to when he was on top of the wall in season one and was talking you know when he did that big yell on season one and somehow he's on a uh, 50 meter wall and people in like a uh, 5,000 meter radius could hear him of course he had the flask a yep. little liquid courage then as well yeah he tells the soldiers though that they have limited gear and anyone who drank the wine needs to follow him and defend off the invaders so i'm get, assuming he means we're giving the gear to idiots <laughs> who didn't drink the wine <laughs> to people who might not turn into a titan at any <laughs> given moment yeah which seems smart. He's like, we're rallying all of us up, and we're going to, one by one, we're cutting off all of our ears. Problem <laughs> solved. <laughs> Go to the Van Gogh room. It's right over here. I like to think Keith, he obviously didn't drink the wine, because why? he probably smelled it first off and knew, oh, I cannot. This is danger. He just thought to himself, this is danger. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but I like to think he got everyone to leave, and he's slowly pulling out a knife. He's like, I might have drank it, I don't know. So he's getting ready to cut his own ears off. Oh, well, not only that, I think... Um, who are you talking about right now? I'm talking about Keith right now. Okay. That's why he stayed in the, the cell. Yeah. And he's thinking to himself, he's like, I don't think I drank it, but just in case. And he's cutting off his ears. What I think they should have done is after Pixis gave this whole spiel, everyone walks by him, and then when they walk by him, he pulls out um, a glass of wine from his... His jacket, and he just starts drinking. <laughs> <laughs> we then go over to... He's too far gone at this point. Why not? You yeah. Know? Live a little. Oh, I'm sure Pixis, as soon as he found out he drank the wine, I'm sure he was just like, well, fuck it. I'm going to keep guzzling this shit down. Guzzling. It's a good word. We then go over to Mikasa and Louise. Yeah. How dare you ask if I remember this girl's name? I'm a professional podcaster, bro. I have literally never been wrong. I dare one listener to show me one time I was. Well, I'll tell you when. When you said Cynthia, and the fact that you couldn't remember from no, you the get, fact that you couldn't if, remember from season three, episode three, at the fifteen minute and thirty five second mark when I told Kyle you, dude, it. I have a second removed Aunt Cynthia and Aunt Marie. Okay, I got them mixed up. If you gave me a second shot, I would have gotten it right. Well, you also said point to the time you were wrong, so I did. Yeah, well, you interrupted. That doesn't count. You interrupted me. Everyone and knows you get three tries. If anybody wants to check that, did you uh, did you ask? Was that my final answer? No. Well, oh, you're right. I didn't ask that. I was thinking out loud. So, as I was saying, yes, yeah, stuffed. <laughs> Mikasa and Louise were suiting up together, and Louise is happy that they are both now fighting for similar goals as Mikasa is kind of in a depressed phase where she's not saying much anymore. She used to have one word that she liked to say, Eden, and now she doesn't really know what to say. She's speechless. Mikasa, like I said, almost looks dead inside and is folding up the scarf and placing it down to leave it behind. What did you think about Did this make you a little upset on the inside when you saw this? No, didn't make me upset. What? You don't have a chance this, with her, so why does it make... Her leaving the scarf there? That made me upset. She's been wearing that thing since season one. Yeah. And even Louise knows about the scarf, which is hilarious, because I feel like she doesn't even know Mikasa like that. It's just everyone knows about it. Yeah. Even They don't even know that it's connected to Aaron somehow. They just know about it because they're like, 
Oh, Mikasa, the, the one that kicks ass and is very attractive, but also has that scarf that just smells yeah. terrible. Yeah, it goes back over to Louise, and she's holding her nose. She's like, are you finally leaving that behind? <laughs> she's like, are you not taking it with you? And Mikasa's like, no. And then if we'd seen Louise at that point, she would have given a fist bump. Yeah. <laughs> like, Thank you, God. So, yeah, she tells Louise, though, that I am leaving it behind as she walks out slowly. But Louise... I do imagine that she's definitely happy that that nasty thing isn't coming along. Louise, she's a little freaky too. We know that she's got a very special, like, uh, admiration for Mikasa. She was the one that saved her and her mummy back in season one. Mm-hmm. So she also might be weird enough to where she just went and inhaled that scarf herself yeah. as she walked out of the room. Yeah, I, that might be in her pocket. I don't want to think about that. A theory right now. There comes a time when Aaron and Mika said they rekindle their, you know, um, whatever, however you want to define their relationship. And Louise just strolls up, taps her on the shoulder, and she's like, here, I thought you might want this, and hands her the scarf. Their relationship is like any relationship I've ever had with a woman, is how I put it. Where are you... And I don't know how to define their relationship, so I don't know how what that means about your relationship with a woman. Well, you women. just say mean things to them and tell them you've always hated them. Okay. So. We then get a montage of our Shinganshina heroes walking up the steps. Can you name them? I'm not sure what you're talking about. They're walking. They're officially walking up the steps, going to the rooftops right now. Our heroes. Yelena's referred to them as the heroes of Shinganshina. Okay. I mean, this moment. Did you not think this moment was badass when they're slowly walking up? It's Connie Well, Yelena said it, so no. <laughs> Jean, that was, she said that like two episodes ago, but this is Connie, Jean, Mikasa, Armin. I love how it like slowly, it's so it's so dreadfully slow, and then it just pans on their face, mm-hmm. each one of their faces. And I thought, I was like, well, this is, I mean, I guess they're kind of cool, but this makes them not that cool. So why did you, why did you want me to name them? Because. I, why? You're really into trivia this episode. <laughs> I'm just testing your <laughs> watching abilities. You're like, oh, there's this guy on top of the wall. Um, uh, round three. Uh, what is the name of this guy? Do you, oh, I got a good one, though. Who who did uh, the flock cock squawk? Sir Flockery himself. Who yeah. did he say when they first flew up? He said, hey, you. And he said a guy's name. He said, go this way. <laughs> You know why it was hilarious? Why? His name is so funny. We didn't mention this yet. The guy's name was Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure you'd say something about it, but I just forgot about it until now. Oh, man. Frank, Frank and Flock. Well, yeah, they, they walk outside to see Yelena's crazy ass mm-hmm. standing on the edge of, yeah. edge of the building watching just all of the airships crash down. As she's holding her hands up in the air, like she, it is just yeah, a totally inappropriate time for her to be doing that. What? That's what we should be doing out in the snow right now. Yes, that would make sense for us to be doing that. Her, she's doing it as zeppelins are falling from the sky. I don't. Yeah. What is she? As her pants are just soaked while cuckoo, she's looking at Zeke in the cuckoo. background too. So a couple of them crash into the uh, the gate, completely blocking it. And, uh, you know, I, I put right here, she's in Looney Tune heaven because yeah. she just saw Zeke the monkey standing on top of the wall. So Aaron, again, is doing the signature Chad drunk walk. Um, yeah. It, so when we see Zeke on the wall, I did a bit of calculating. He has a 36-pack of abs while also maintaining his beer belly. And then over to the Aaron shot, we cut to a worm's eye view directly into his anus. Yeah. We did get a lot that. of butthole in this episode. Yeah, well, he doesn't technically have one, but I like to imagine that it's, he does have one. It's just super small because he's not doing anything with it. Okay. Yelena says that the moment that shall change history is at hand. And anyone who is talking about history while in the middle of the event is a crazy, crazy person. person. I that's exactly what mm-hmm. I put in my notes. And anytime some, especially when somebody says 
changing history. Yeah. That is the talks of a mm-hmm. crazy person. It's people talking about history before it's actually been made, and people talking about their destiny. Two major yes. red flags. Yeah, she's not even saying we're about to write history. She's saying we're changing history, yeah. whatever the fuck that means. We go to the calling card. What's it say? I don't remember because it was so unnecessary of a calling card that I did not write it down. Just sit in that. Sit in that okay. for fucking podcasting right now. It said... You even paused it. I paused it because I was talking about Yelena. Or I was typing about Yelena. The calling card basically said, uh, the Marley surprise attack happened because they're trying to get the founding titan. Wow. Like, no shit. Wow. Here we're just... This whole podcast falling. Out. We no. named them calling cards. We did that. We don't know what they're called. We named them calling yeah. cards, and now you're just gonna start just fucking disrespecting. Do I have to throw back to when we did the calling card on torches? Yeah, and you know what I have to say to that? That was the best one we've ever had. We've never had a good one since. Torches. Fuck you, dude. That makes me so mad to hear. That's like, ugh. I feel right now the same way I imagine Mikasa felt. When Aaron said that he hated her in the entire life. And actually, I felt this way the same way before. Okay. When you told me, when I went through an entire childhood as your friend, and then later on you told me that you didn't care about Power Rangers. No, I said the red one was my favorite. No, 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 no. I remember very specifically. You told me, oh, yeah, I basically I just really looked up to you, and I only acted like I liked Power Rangers because of you, and I don't <laughs> actually care about Power Rangers. That, and right now when you said you didn't write down the calling card, is the two times I felt the most hurt by our friendship. Well, you know what I have to say to that? Ever gonna, since... I'm just gonna wait. Let me prepare myself because it's probably gonna fucking hurt. Go ahead. Ever since I was little, I've always hated Power Rangers. All right. Just... <laughs> I mean, they're overrated, dude. I don't go know ahead, the names of them. Go ahead with your half-assed notes. Aaron... Oh, you don't think that the uh, Megazord, any inspiration was taken from the Megazord for the Titan battles that we see today? Is that what you're telling me? No, I don't think that. Are you telling me when the Power Rangers morph and then they get into their dinosaurs and... (laughs) Mighty morphing? When they mighty morph and then they make a Megazord and they all come together as a team, as one unit, to fight together because we're all better together. And then they fight... For some reason, Rita always had the power to make the little monsters she sent down also big, and then they would fight, and sparks would come out. Oh, and guess what happens in Attack on Titan? Smoke. They literally just changed what kind of pyrotechnic thing happened, and you're going to tell me it's not... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let me call up Isayama real quick. Say, hey, have you ever watched the Power Rangers episode? Guess what? He's going to tell me, watched all of them. Well, I'll say this. If they do some lame-ass thing, like whatever you just explained, had no idea what you were talking about, I'm going to get up like Aaron is walking right now and walk out of this building. Whatever, dude. Whatever. So Aaron's doing his walk, and Reiner starts to sprint at him um, very angrily, menacingly, as the Beast Titan sends him another volley, and it looks to completely obliterate him. These throws are just... What do you think about him, man? Yeah, I mean, he's about as big of a threat as Rita Repulsa from the uh, galaxy above. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't just look that up, did you? Um, and, but no, here's my actual note. I'm just stuck kind of caught on the Power Ranger things. He, uh, Zeke, this is exactly why you put in the work... The aim is unbelievable. That's what all those games of catch with Mr. Tom... This is where they're paying off. Yeah, do you think Tom had any idea that this is who he was raising? He's like, oh, he's going to get the beast and just start obliterating everyone. Oh, yeah, because you don't have aim like this and not do. Every time we saw him, they were just having these lollygagging games of catch. That was them warming up. I want to see where he's setting up glass bottles of targets and stuff, and Zeke is just nailing them. And he, he doesn't have any catcher gear. So Zeke's throwing pitches to him, and he's like, dude, you're getting too quick for this. Mm-hmm. So Connie then says, uh, I think Reiner's the one that needs our help. With what I've missed, 
classic Connie line. We need a little joke here and there. We don't have Sasha anymore yeah, for that relief. Thank God for Connie. <laughs> Jean then realizes that, which Jean realizes what no one else has realized so far, that Zeke is here. So that has to mean that something happened to Levi and Hanji. They right. wouldn't just let him go. And he asks Alina what happened, and she says that Hanji and Levi were beaten by Zeke, and he came as he promised. Just talking of Connie, you turned to me. <laughs> I can't even say it. You turned to me at one point and said, "Connie looks so cool." <laughs> <laughs> you turned to me and said, "Oh, Connie's design just looks like so fucking cool." It does. It does. And then I laughed, and because then I was like, I looked at you, and you were basically like, "Well, it, um, it's just like <laughs> now you can tell that he has actual hair rather than it just looking drawn on," and that was like your one thing. Which it's still drawn on, if you think about it, because an, it's an anime. <laughs> right. So I don't know why I said that. Yeah. But he does look cool. Come on. Uh, you're such a fucking but hater, But they put dude. some fine strokes in there. Yeah, but you're well, a ha- just admit that you're a hater. What has he done? He's The last two episodes, he's been a baller. I agree. Is so this, stop it. Is it. I don't want to get ahead of your notes here. Is this when they're on the rooftop? Or yes. is this okay. Talking to Yelena. Okay, so not... Okay. Yeah, they're talking. I don't want to say my note yet because okay. we're not there yet. Yeah, they just talked to you. That's not a roof, by the way. That's like a porch. Yeah, whatever it is. We don't. It's just when castle. I ask you, are they on the roof yet? When they're going to be on a roof here in a second, don't say yes. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. When they're clearly not on a roof. <laughs> they're on the porch. That's another terrible name for it. But. Yeah, I don't know. What are they called? I don't. They're on the castle. We're just going to say castle. Well, no, because then if they're on the castle, that might mean they're on a roof. Arm is literally going to act like the initial Warhammer Titan design was not exactly like Lord Zed's. <laughs> Just stop looking. You <laughs> don't know all these names. No, dude. I, I you know don't. Them, I know them off the top of my head. I could do the <laughs> same thing. I could look up every Power Ranger name and act no. like I know. God. They're drawing these things. They're literally like Finster molding the monsters out of <laughs> Molding them out of clay, sending them to the. Uh... By the way, if, if if Isayama comes out and he talks about how much he loves Power Rangers and this, it really influenced his writing. I will forever be so angry. Yeah, you're gonna look like a fool. Is what you're gonna look like. God. So Armin realizes that he's about to lose all of his friends' help because when they hear that they defeated Levi and Hanji, you can tell they're like, "Oh fuck, what do we do now?" So he says, we don't have a choice. We have to leave it to Zeke and Aaron to save the world. And then that's when we see Yelena with the most memeable shot, I yeah. think, in Attack on Titan history, staring over at Armin on his shoulder. First off, anime. Second of off. Second of off. That's not how you say that. Second off, it made my blood start to boil. This is the kind of thing where if Flock did it, it would have been my phone wallpaper for the foreseeable future, just like the last half season when we got the famous smiling shush. Yep. But no, it's Yelena, and it just grinded my gears. I liked it. I thought uh, there's going to be a lot of memes over it. It's kind of like the Flock one. But is it as good as the Flock smile? No, it's not, because Mm -hmm. no one can do it like the future successor of the founding type. But I wanted to say, let's come up with a meme on the spot for that photo. When would you give that face? Oh, I know, this is really okay. putting you on the spot. When but. would I give that face? It would be when, because it was kind of scrunched. I have a good one. Just came up with it on the spot. When you smell my fart? That's very close. I was going to say when you scratch your anus okay. through your underwear, but then you, you know... You gotta. You always gotta take a little sniff after you do that, and it's way worse than you expected. That's what I put. All right. So Armin looks like a scared little child while she's doing this, and then she just smiles and says, "Please help them." And you saying when would that face be good? Not here. Face didn't make any sense here. So why did she it make makes it? Makes total sense here. <laughs> you know why? Because she's a crazy person. <laughs> well, that's true. That is your one good point and all that. So we go to Colt as he's carrying a uh, rifle 
and what Ronnie says to be a pole vault. Yeah, he's definitely got a pole vault. Makes sense. He does strike me as a kind of a track and field guy, and more specifically, a pole vaulting guy. Yeah, I love to think he's like, okay, we're gonna. I've got this pole vault. We're gonna vault over this fifty meter wall. Okay, this is our <laughs> this only fifty. <laughs> he's going. I'm going for a record. Yeah, he's like both the gates. They're blocked. This is our only option. But him and Gabby are running to find Falco. And Gabby asks him what the pole vault is, and he says it's an anti-Titan rifle. So, to me, it just looks like a massive sniper rifle. And even then, it doesn't even, I don't, it's not a sniper, is it? Because it's no, like a, uh, it's... He, he calls it an anti-Titan rifle gear type thing, but it just looks like. It's got like a Thunder Spear vibe to it. Like, I don't understand, like, is it, does it shoot something, or is it to, like, st- Trying to yeah. stab in their neck. I don't know. Like it, it's, it's a sh- it shoot. He calls it a rifle, so I'm assuming he's oh. just, he shoots it. But I was so stuck on the fact that it was a pole vault. Yeah. I did not hear he, that he it even was said, indeed a rifle. He even said it could if you you can actually damage the person inside if you hit him in the nape perfectly. But obviously, we know Colt does not have that good of a shot. At least it wasn't asking for too not, too much. So they see they fi- they're running to find Falco and they see the uh, the MPs walking out along with Falco. Falco then sees them, and not, he tells Niall that it's his brother that he just saw. And this whole gang right here makes me laugh. Every single one of them except for Niall. First of all, there's no way we've ever seen any of them ever before. Second of all, they all look like accountants. Yeah, they're like the loser <laughs> MPs in charge. <laughs> there's, I swear to God, they were keeping the books at the top of the castle or whatever we want to call this thing. It's not a castle. People are going to be mad that we're calling it a castle. Oh, yeah. They kept the books, and they were just, you know, taking sips of wine while they were doing so. And then when the getting got bad, they were like, oh, just give them a, give them a military police jacket. Yeah, one of the guys, is the he was around the, the round table when he was talking about, we should let Historia get away with being pregnant. Uh, she's such a whore for that. Yeah. We need to turn her into a titan now. Right. He was, That's what he was saying. You weren't saying that. No, I wasn't saying... No, I would never no, say no. that. That's what he was saying. No. But I saw that guy, and I was like, oh, that guy is dying soon. That's all I thought. hmm So Niall then slowly walks over to a, the corner where he tells them that I'm going to go tie this guy up in a house. And he slowly walks up to the corner as Gabby tells Colt not to shoot. He then says, Niall gets around the corner and tells them this is no place for a child and tells them to go home. I don't appreciate all this beautiful character development for Niall just so it hits harder when they kill him. Yeah, that's so what it is. I mean, has there never uh, been anything clear of what we're seeing yeah. right here? Because Niall, to me, never really cared about him. and The, the episodes where he helped out Erwin on the coup d'etat those were pretty cool. You saw that he really does have, you know, kind of a good heart. Right. But like you said, it's a classic. It's a classic green to white ranger. Nile was the green ranger. He was an enemy <laughs> to our team. My God. They take him away, but he was so well loved by all the fans that we brought him back as the white ranger as a member of the team. And then he kind of took Jason's spot, which I know as a red ranger fan really made you mad. Because well, Tommy was fucking the shit out of the Pink Ranger. Didn't know, because didn't even know the guy's name was Jason. Just knew he was red. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Next you're going to tell me you didn't know his name was Ivan Ooze. <laughs> <laughs> no. If there's one character I know from Power Rangers, it is, by God, the man himself, <laughs> Ivan Ooze. Go on. Oh, God. So then we go and see Colt and Falco. They're hugging it out. I never thought this moment would happen. We all thought he was going to splat on the ground from his parachute. But then Colt asks Gabby why she trusted the enemy when right when she's about to talk, they get interrupted by Niccolo and the Browse family. And I love how Fred and family couldn't be in any less of a hurry. (laughs) (laughs) They are taking their sweet-ass time. So they're hiding behind the... uh, they're hiding behind the door while, you know, Mr. Browse and his wife are talking about hoping that Ben and Mia are all right, and Mr. Browse even calls them some toughens. Yeah. God, I, I love this guy, man. Well, do you? Because you didn't know that he had the line. You guessed three people before him. If this guy dies, 
I will. I haven't cried on the show yet. Right. Well, I've, I have cried on the show. I take that back. But I will spill tears out of my face. Yeah. Yeah. If he dies, it's gonna be a lot like when Zordon. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more. His Zordon is laying on his deathbed, and they have to go to that weird jungle to. I just save him. It's gonna be nothing like that. But well, it's gonna be a lot like I'm, that. I'm tired of you looking up summaries of Power Rangers during my awesome notes. Definitely looking up summaries. <laughs> so As if I hadn't watched that movie 70 times. And also, not a movie, film. Even though it says Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, it's a film. Yeah, it's, it's one of those Spongebob situations. So Gabby starts to tear up, and then she hears Kaya say, I wish I could kill her myself. She killed Big Sis. Which makes her tear up even more. Now, do you think, this is my theory, mm-hmm. Kaya's going to kill her. Really? She's going to kill that bitch. <sighs> that, it could definitely happen. That would be epic. Because it's like, they already showed us that she tried that one time, and af- after that, I was kind of like, um, oh, never mind. It's oh, They threatened us with it, now it's going to go away. But the fact they're still hanging around. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And after this emotional scene, you're getting ready to recap here right now. So Gabby, we can tell, is finally coming to her senses, and she gets real sad, and as Colt starts to leave, when the Browse family leaves, she doesn't want to. She sits there and she says that there were never devils on this island, just people. I finally understand Reiner. By the way, this show loves bird cages this season. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like the new version of Straight from the Horse's Mouth. Oh, yeah. Just the imagery of bird cages and everything oh so she gets real upset she says they do the same things over and over and we get a shot of the open bird cage to see that she's finally opened up from that damn caged mind of herself oh beautiful Mm. it's beautiful beautiful is there a bird cage emoji i hope so if there's not we're gonna make one we're gonna make one i finally got to the point where i think I'm going to stop hating on Gabby, and I want all of you to stop hating on Gabby. Mm-hmm. I know we've got some salty spittoons yeah. that yeah. Uh, just I'll get tell, real mad I'll about what she did. Uh, yeah, all these people calling them calling her cunt, cut it out. Yeah. Not we, cool. I think we've been saying since episode one of season four, stop calling this girl a cunt. Yeah, if you've been calling her a cunt, take out the end and, take out the end and cut it out. Did you like it? <laughs> yeah, you like it. I like that. A little spelling joke. God, that was... Jean talked about how cool Aaron was. That was really cool. What Thank you. you. Thank you. If Jean heard that, he'd think you're cool. Uh, I like this so much, he's going to start following me around like Alpha 5. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> I'm running out of characters, don't worry. Yeah, you wouldn't have known any of them if you hadn't. You don't have a character list pulled up. Uh, I don't. Oh. Falco decides in this moment to confess and say that he sent letters from a wounded Aaron Yeager, who he didn't know was Aaron Yeager, and that ended up getting uh, Udo and Sophia should be Sophia slaughtered. Oh, <laughs> and uh. Gabby and Colt, you know, they hear that and they're, you know, that upsets them, but they're not mad at him. And then he tells Gabby that he's in love with her and the reason he wanted to get the armor. Whoa, dude. What? Make that note more of a moment. Just because love makes you awkward doesn't mean that you have to just skip on right by like you're playing hopscotch. Falco tells Gabby, I've always been in love with you. Aww. And the reason that I wanted to get the armor is so I could save you and we could get married and be happy together and you could live a long life. Shipping it. This guy's got balls, okay? The look Colt and Gabby give each other when he says this is absolutely hysterical. It is very (laughs) funny. Colt's like, God, this guy... (laughs) My little brother is way cooler than I can ever be. I know. That's what he's thinking. I've, I keep going, but I also yeah. have a note along the same lines. So she blushes and, and asks why he says this. And he goes, because I drank the wine and I might turn into a titan any second. And I put right here, I finally have a line I can use on women. 
I'm going to confess my love to any woman I see, and if they ask me why, I'm going to say, well, I drink wine, and I might become a Titan at any moment. Well, I doubt it as much as you just blush talking about uh, Falco's sweet line. Well, I had a, I'm had taking a hard a time getting through it. Wear your emotions on your sleeve, dude. Come on. How cute was this, though? It was so cute. So cute. What are you? What were you having to say? Was that it? Did, did well, they not then, say something Okay, else? then she... As he says that, she gets real angry, rips off his armband, and okay. that's a good callback to when uh, he did that to her. Such a season. terribly inefficient way to take off the armband, by the way. Oh, yeah. I believe it was very loosely tied. Could have just untied it. She really struggled with it for a second. And then Colt says, if we go tell Zeke, he might not scream. Yeah, so my note on Colt was I feel like he's listening to all of this between, like, Gabby had come in full circle, being like, oh, they're not devils, talking about how he basically caused all of this, then admitting his love for the woman that he cherishes so, and Colt's just over there being like, oh my god, these little kids have like lived so much more of a fulfilling life than I have. <laughs> yeah, Colt's He's like, like, I've been standing in a corner for like the last eight years just waiting for my time to come, and you're telling me, good lord. That is so true. Colt's like... I literally chased you around Liberia for 30 minutes. Y'all flew off and this has all happened? He's like, what I've got to stop looking for Colt and get out, get out a little bit more. Jeez. Uh, and also, too, I don't think... He's Colt, like, is there a single person around here that's my age? Everyone else seems to be a little bit older, a little bit younger. I am the only person yeah. who's my age. I love, too, how Colt says that about Zeke. It's like, first off, if they can even get to Zeke to tell him that, is Zeke going to really be like, I mean, I'm sure he cares about Falco, but is he really going to be like, okay, I'm not going to scream now just because of Falco? No. I don't think so. No, no. So we go back to the action, and we've got our crew with actual rifles in their hand on a rooftop, and this is the rooftop I think that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I just, I wanted to know, who do you think is the best shot? Obviously, because you were like, you made a comment of, oh, it's not you, we're not used to seeing them with guns in their hands. Obviously, it used to be Sasha, because she was yep. a hunter, she was sniping domes back, domes back in Liberia. Who do you think it is now? I think with a rifle, which this is so crazy to think about, mm-hmm. the only other person we've seen technically shoot a rifle is Aaron. Yeah. Remember when he shot, like he was for some reason in practice range? Right, I do remember um, that. So maybe him. I... The only reason I say that, I haven't seen anybody else do it. Obviously, Mikasa probably is just good at it mm-hmm. anyways. Well, my shots towards Connie started catching up with me a little bit this last week. Um, and Connie, he's just a bit, I can't believe he's still around. Sometimes he wins me over a little bit, then other times I'm just like, okay, Connie, we get it. I, But here's my moment. I think that maybe Connie's our new, uh, our new marksman. Wow. What made you think of this? Um, I just feel like Jean is too, he's got a lead, right? So he can't be hanging back with a gun. He's got to be front lines and stuff. Mikasa, I feel like she's just more energetic, a little bit more slashy. She's into the action. She's not sitting back either. Connie, think about what he's just sitting on the sideline through the entire show. Why not post him up with a little gun action? Yeah, because you know Armin, he's not going to have a good shot. No, Armin's not good at anything. Yeah. Armin's, the, beep, bop, beep, beep, bop, bop, bop. Armin's the recoil would knock his shoulder out of place. Are you kidding me? Uh, also, too, Armin... Thank God he's not up here on this roof. If he shot a rifle, he would fall off this roof. <laughs> Armin... Wait, Armin wasn't on the roof? I remember looking, and it was just Mika, Sajan, and uh, Connie. He, Is Armin about to go colossal? He might, but he oh, also... He, he would kill a lot of innocent people. Yeah. His own people. So, I know... Well, he didn't did. necessarily have to. It's one of those things, that, though, that even like if he think about him just walking around, he would kill. He would accidentally kill a bunch of people hiding in buildings. Like, yeah, there's really no good way for him to do it without killing people. Well, really, what is the biggest? I mean, yeah, I know they got Marlins like uh, with rifles shooting things and stuff, but that's the biggest problem for our our main cast right here. The reason they're for the other Poor soldiers, stuff. yeah, that aren't the, tied the other, up. Yeah, but because I feel like they might get shot at any moment. If Armin could colossal and just go take care of 
the cart titan and the mega sniper on the back of it yeah i feel like we'd be in a much better place yeah we're about to see why this thing's pretty damn dangerous especially with uh the best gunman and marley yeah you know they're they're porched up on the roof trying to take some shots at the marley gunman and then we see a jaws come flying in um and as he starts to get closer to Aaron, Zeke gives another volley. This pitch just takes him out. And this is when I realized Galliard, Porco as the Jaw Titan, low key, not that good. He well, is always trying to make a play. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's quick as He's fun. much more efficient than Ymir was back in the day. But nine times out of ten, anytime he tries to make a move, that shit gets shut down pretty quickly and easily. By all the other Titans. Yeah. It's one of those things where he's kind of like uh, an earlier Aaron. He's a hothead. And he thinks that if he just goes full force really quick, Mm -hmm. he can get rid of it. But that obviously does not work out. Perfectly said. Good job. He tells Aaron... Zeke tells Aaron that we are so close to fulfilling our dream. Or I guess he's not telling him that, but he's saying this in his head. Uh, They might be, uh, you know, conversing via paths. Yeah. They might be in the... uh, the path cloud. What yeah. do you call that? The eye cloud of the paths? Talking with Zordon. They're definitely not doing that. That might make you mad, but do not tell me that you don't That's think good. Zordon was in the paths. If well, there was anyone more in the paths, name one person more in the paths than Zordon. I think Zordon created the paths. Thank you. That I, I'll admit, or not admit defeat, because that was awesome. I will now bow down, and I'm done with my Power Rangers stuff. So when he tells Aaron we're so close to filling our dream, he looks over to see a peak skeleton vaporizing in the distance. The flockcock squawk is celebrating when they ask each other, who did it? Yeah. Who did it? Flock says, oh, this is awesome, guys, but by the way, who did it? <laughs> he goes like, because I didn't do it. When all of a sudden a dude... Frank was like, not me. Are you kidding me? My name's Frank. Well, well, Frank, what happens to Frank right here is he gets fucking shot right in the face. <laughs> And as his brains are flying out of his skull, we see that there's Marley soldiers hiding under the skeleton. We also see Peek. She had hopped out of it. That's why it's vaporizing. So you, that's what you said. You think maybe she just got out of the nape and then this is what happens. The reason I'm wondering if that's not the case is why would it surprise Zeke then? I think Zeke is uh, surprised that she got defeated. Because he knew they, she was in a fight, and he's like, oh, wow. He goes, that's the end of Peak. So that's how it ends. Same thinking that she died, like they got her. Because of the state of the Titan. Yeah, because, well, when you think about it, when you hop out of a Titan, it does eventually vaporize right. and go away. So he's like, oh, they got her. Because he sees the, the soldiers over there fighting, and he's like, I guess they just got her. Because hmm. I think he even had a line that was like, wow, so this is the end for Peak. This is where it ends. Well, he did, right, which is why I would, yeah, I don't know, it seems too easy. I was trying to, what I was trying to do was give the cart titan another special power, because as we know, it's the lamest one. Oh, it might be. No, I might be completely wrong. I thought, because it does show her, she's under the, the uh, skull at this point. Right. I, I think but you're probably, be. what you're saying makes the most sense, but just the fact that Zeke saw it and immediately was acting like something happened. Like, because if you think they just get out of the nape and then they just start dissolving, Zeke would have seen that plenty of times, and he would have been like, "Oh, did she get out of the Titan?" But he was immediately like, "Oh, they got her." So yeah, because then Magath turns with the cannon, and Peek says, "This is your chance, Magath, for a sneak attack, or Magath, whatever the fuck this guy's name is." As he gets a blast, which this is a crazy blast, mm-hmm. straight to Zeke's nape. Which looks like it takes out half of his body. I don't know where exactly it hit. Straight but to his nape. Well, it hit him like through the chest, through his nape. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it got a little bit of the nape. Um, took, How, a, I mean, took a chunk out of that chunky boy. Yeah. It took a chunk out of him, and I think it took a good bit out of his human body. It looks like he was missing yeah. like a shoulder or something. Mm-hmm. But he's still connected to the, the Titan. It's not exactly. like he's out of it. But yeah, as he does that, Zeke starts falling down off the wall and just belly flops. That gut. If he didn't have that gut, I think he would have died right here. 
And I'll give the listeners a sneak peek into what a live watch with Ronnie and Chaz would look like. As the beef, as the beast started falling in slow motion, I had the hot take that he might just start flying. Yeah. Because at this point, I was thinking of hidden Titan moves that we didn't know existed. And you made it even better with the addition that by his method of doing such a thing would just be flapping his arms. <laughs> <laughs> Which, come on, would have been great. The best, yeah, the best thing that could have happened is if he starts flapping his arms, screams, everyone turns into Titans and he just flies off. And then never to be seen again. I mean, everyone just take a second <laughs> to make a mental ex- mental picture in your head of the Beast Titan falling and then just flapping his arms and he just like flies away from, like picks up Aaron with his mouth and flies away from <laughs> Shinganshina. Matt Magath then tells Peak that they need another angle because they're going to blast him again. If And that's when we see Porco and Reiner. They're, uh, they're pretty messed up too, especially Porco at this point. Porco's Titan is very quick. You know, it's a little bit smaller than all the other ones. Yeah. So when he gets slugged or he gets blasted by a volley, his Titan gets pretty fucked up. It really does. The soldiers then tell Reiner, as Reiner's trying to heal, heal that guy. Oh. Another, that's another a, Phil. A classic feel. Phil feel situation. They tell him that they he cannot let Aaron and Zeke come into contact. Reiner then says, Aaron, you're the one person that shouldn't have this power. And McGath says, we must hurry. If Zeke has any life left in him, he'll scream as we get a close-up of Gabby, Falco, and Colt running. And obviously it goes straight to Falco's face. What which a cliffhanger. Is not a good sign. I know. <laughs> like this guy not is... Not a good sign. Just churning away trying to get there. End of episode. And what's even scarier is that... Well, I guess if Zeke screams, everyone's fucked anyways. Oh, my God. And imagine, like, the punch in the gut of, like, say they get there. They run up to the Beast Titan, and he slowly, you know, he just took a hell of a shot. So he slowly looks up. Sees him. And they're like, they're like, Zeke, Zeke, Falco, he drank some of the wine. Stole, stole. And, and then he just, he Ooh. looks at him, and he goes, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Yeah, I... We got to protect Falco at all costs, but that is the end of the episode. They're always talking about them, uh, Aaron and Zeke making contact. When they eventually do, wh- how, what kind of contact do you think they'll make? Will it be like a? Um, are they going to hold hands? Is nope. it going to be a simple one pointer finger touch? No, I would. I would respect a kiss. If, Whoa! Not, not 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 anything sexual. Just a. Well, like, that kiss is pretty sexual. No, most of the like times. a, I've always loved you, little brother, and then he gives him a little kiss a little on the head, s- smooch on the forehead. Yeah, I yeah. feel like Aaron's taller than him now. He might be. That's a, well, Aaron have to bow his head so Zeke yep. can get a little lip lock on that. How many times have you kissed your little brother on the forehead <laughs> in the last couple of years? <laughs> wow, last couple of years, um, seventeen, off the top of my head, is what I'd say. You. <laughs> 17. Anytime okay. we're going to be away for more than a night, I just, hey, come here, Trav. I'm just... <laughs> always loved you. <laughs> just, just a little... Have, have fun. <laughs> have, a good, have a good night. So what was your favorite part of the episode? Mine, 100%, is Zeke saying, but I'll take the rest from here. Or let your big brother take the rest from yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the uh, quote of the week. It's, um, but I, I think I will have to go ahead and say, uh, just Keith. Keith? Yeah. Electric, anytime he's on. Well, quote, that was your quote of the week. My quote of the week, or of the day, sorry. My quote of the day is when Keith said, I just brawled a bear. Right. Yeah. Um, anytime Keith is on the screen, it's just a highlight factory. It's electric, yeah. Yeah, that's a highlight factory for sure. I think you got up and did a jumping jack. You did one single jumping jack and then sat Just down. real quick. And, yeah. And then like, I was Whoa. so out of breath. Just got back to my notes. and Yeah. So what do you think? Do we got any hot takes here? We already kind of talked about the uh, the Falco stuff. Yeah, I think you're spot on with that. That's probably what's going to happen. He's going to – Zeke's going to – they're either not going to get there in time and he's donezo or right when they get there, he just yells. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I think that's got to happen, right? Zeke yelling, just in general. He does. I mean, they've said it so many times. And at that point, does just... I mean, think about it. 
They said 300 soldiers. We're going to assume maybe some of them died. There's going to be at least 100 people turn into Titans. But then right where does Fal- like we're not done with Falco. Where does he go from there? What Titan does he get if he turns into a mindless Dude, Titan? He could get I mean, I don't this is not going to happen, but theoretically him getting the founding Titan eventually could happen. Well, that's the thing too. Why do you, him getting the founding Titan? The only reason I say that is because the season four part one, right? He's like the the end of the episode is just Falco reaching up. He okay. he had what well, we we talked about this the future him flying or whatever with the sword. Mm-hmm. It could just be the ODM gear, but yeah, I don't know if we talked about that on air. We've always made a big deal about that. I was uh, editing a podcast one time, and I was like, that might just be what if he just see he's seeing people on ODM gear. Or something like that. Um, or he gets the armor. I mean, he's, they've talked about that multiple times, too. Okay. I think that would probably... If I had to put money on it, that would be my best bet. He turns into a Titan, and Reiner just basically gives it to him. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a pretty safe bet, I think. And Gabby? Where, where do we go with Gabby from here? How does she I don't, Gabby never. Help? She's never getting a Titan. She's never get one, but how does she continue to help? Oh, Can I she... mean, she's scrappy, you know? Yeah. She's, um, she'll find ways to make some moves. Okay. She, I mean, she's got a character. She's not going to do anything crazy. Well, I shouldn't even say that. She could always be like, um, come in with the whatever that rifle that Colt had at the right time or something yep. like that. She's scrappy. That is true. Get a gun in her hands. We saw yeah. her shoot Sasha straight in the heart. Yeah, and then from there, I don't even know. It just is crazy. We get to the end of every episode. I bet next episode, do you think we'll get any Hanji Levi? Or do you think we just stay here? We might just stay here. I don't... Well, we, I guess... There's we still so get... many things left on the board that does not include what's going on here, such as Hanji and Levi, Historia, Oh yeah, Annie... Oh, God. When are we going to get Annie, man? Like We got a lot. We got a lot to get to, brother. And then we got to get to... Pats. This is my last war. All right. I think that about wraps it up. I think it does. We will see y'all next week. Uh, You can follow us at Podcast Chronic on Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube. Leave a rate and review in the podcast apps. I think you can only do it on Apple Podcasts. Discord in the description below. You got anything else? Comment on YouTube, please. We love to see the comments. I've been Ronnie. I've been Chatty. Go, go, Power Rangers! Mighty Morphin Power Rangers!